Welcome to this video, great to have you on board. You're already seeing this stream diagram where we can depict how an observable emits values and how we use these values in an observer. Something I had a closer look at in this video here. Now that's great, but the even better thing about observables besides the nice structure is that they have this funnel-like approach where we can pass the values which are emitted through as many operators as we want before they finally reach the observer. So we might have our first operator, maybe the map operator, which will simply turn our values into transformed values. The logic for the transformation lives in the map function then. So maybe we transform a number to a string, an object into a simpler object or whatever we need. Now these transformed values could again reach the next function now, but maybe we want to chain another operator really using that funnel-like approach. Well, we can do that. Maybe we have the throttle time operator, which makes sure that no more than one value can reach the next function per, well, window frame here, so per 2000 milliseconds in this case. So the first value here would reach next, but the second one wouldn't maybe because not enough time passed between the two values. Maybe here two seconds were passed or did pass since the last value, so this value will make it, the next value won't, but maybe now we again have more than two seconds in between, so that value might also make it. This is why operators are great. In the end, in the next function, we know exactly what we will get, because we did chain these operators, but we can ensure that we only get what we want to get by transforming and controlling the values just as we need it. Let's see this in an example now. I'm on JS Fiddle here, I added a script import using the rxjs cdn link, which you can get on the install it page on reactivex.io slash rxjs. At the very bottom, this link, remove, add the version and hit enter to get the latest version, and then just that link. Now that's all what I'm starting with, and now I want to create a simple observable, because in this video I don't want to focus on the observable, I want to focus on the operators. So the observable I will use here is, or the way of creating an observable, is chosen from the list of methods we have for creating new observables, quite a lot. I used create in another video, now I want to use interval. This one here. Now interval will simply emit a new value every x milliseconds with x being passed as an argument. So I can simply say var observable, of course you could choose a different name, is rx observable and then interval and I will pass one here or 1000 to be precise, so one second. That we get a new value every second. Now which value do we get? simply an ascending number of integers. So one, two, three, and so on. Simply incrementing numbers. That's the observable. Now I wanna subscribe to that and I'll create an observer for this. And that observer here is simply as we learned in another video too, just a JavaScript object. And we can implement next, error, or complete. This specific observable here will never complete, it will run infinitely, and it will never throw an error. So I can just implement the next method here. I know that in the next method I do get the value and I simply want to log the value. So what I can do with these two pieces defined is I can now use the observable called the subscribe method which is provided by the rxjs package and pass my observer. And with the console being open, if I now hit control enter, we see zero, one, two, and this keeps on increasing every second and it won't stop. Now that is my observable setup here. Now let's use operators. We chain these operators before calling subscribe. So I will move subscribe to a new line but still call it on, well, whatever else I chain here. And the first thing I wanna chain actually is map. We saw that on the slide before and map transforms the value the observable emits. Actually, map will give us back a new observable, but this observable will hold the transformed data. Why does it give us back a new observable? It has to. We call subscribe in the end and we can only call subscribe on observables. So map takes a function as an argument. This function will hold the logic we use for transforming the value. 
So here we know we get the value because that is what we plan on changing. That was what our XJS will give us here. And in the body, we may do whatever we want to do with that value and then call subscribe on what we return in the end. So here I could simply return value times two and I simply return the number here. So that will be an integer. But again, our XJS will automatically create a new observable which emits this transformed number as a value so that subscribe will work. With that, if I clear the console and hit control enter to start a new iteration, we start at zero, but then we get two, four and so on. So we get our doubled value. That's the map operator working. And we could do whatever we want. We could hard code something totally different here like hello. If I now clear this and hit control enter, well, we get hello all the time because we don't care about the original value, which would have been a number. We always return hello. That's the power of the operator. Now, just returning hello is boring. I will return this is number or just number and then the value to have a little prefix in front of my numbers. So now if I clear this and hit control enter again, we see number zero, one and so on. Now let's chain another operator again before subscribe to have an effect. And then this could be the, well, let's stick to the one we saw on the slide, tr throttle time. Here, I have to pass a number as an argument. This number defines for how long I want to wait. So here I could say throttle two seconds. Now, since we do emit a new value every second, and we wait for full two seconds to pass before we accept the new value, we should actually skip two values at a time. So let's see that. We start at zero, which makes sense. But then the next value is three, which makes sense because one and two were skipped because when we emit the second value, two seconds are not quite finished, but right thereafter they are. So we see every third value we could say, because we wait two seconds. If I would decrease this, this to 1,900, you will see that we see every second value. So now if I hit control enter, here we see zero, then we see two and we four and so on. So that is throttle time and map now combined. And that is how we can use that funnel like structure to apply any of the operators we want and have a look at the official documentation at the observable docs here to get a full list of all operators, there are quite a lot, to really control to get what we want. And I will create more videos on more of these operators, more interesting ones and interesting combinations of these operators, no worries. But I hope that this already clears up some of the confusion and shows how powerful operators and this funnel-like approach are. See you in other videos, hopefully. Bye.